uh, okay uh, the um, the meeting is being recorded as you listen from the message so if you uh, for some reasons do not agree to the record the video recording um, I kindly suggest you to switch your video camera off. So, ready to start. The objective of this presentation, introductory, my introductory presentation, is to sum up the executive summary and to provide suggestions for discussion for the next stages of the project, uh, which are based on the literature review, the comparative analysis of partner reports, and uh, the integration of information and references to the European framework. I have to say that it has been a complex report due to the lack of comparable data related to the organization of sports and education systems and to the different models of disabilities. Now, um, first of all, let's focus on the legal framework. So the rights of people with disabilities, we all know are formally recognized by the UN Convention of the Rights of People with Disabilities. Uh, which is based on the concept of equal opportunities for both education and sports participation. But I'd like to, you know, to highlight this point, even though I know that we all know this. In addition, all uh, each partner legislation mentions the right to university education and sport for people with disabilities. Now, uh, to go a little deeper into the legal framework and understanding the legal framework, um, I'd like to focus on these three points, the UN Convention, the local provisions, and giving some examples. So um, well, we noticed that all partner countries signed the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which recognize, as I've just said, the right to take part in education and sport. Um, uh, there are local provisions in all partner countries There are national and or, or regional acts or local uh, provisions or legislation that directly concern people with disabilities, both in the field, uh, either in the field of sport or education. Here are some examples taken from the different countries, for example, um, the law uh, that is applied in Romania. Italian law 104, Spain has an organic law, Portugal has a special law as well, and Ireland a disability act, for example. Now, uh, staying still in the legal framework, there are also significant differences between partner countries in terms of dual career though. So for example, only Spain and Portugal have specific laws as you can read in point one. Um, in Romania, uh, national laws on dual career do not seem to exist. And according to the study commissioned uh, by the European Parliament in 2016, the majority of member states still provide limited support to student athletes. However, in most countries, um, higher education institutions or university, from now on I will call them universities, have a certain degree of decision-making autonomy, which ends up in put into practice specific, although heterogeneous provisions to support dual career paths for student athletes. Oh, um, Let's move on to good practices. In all the countries involved in the project, there are initiatives to promote sports activity for people with disabilities. So let's see some examples of good practice. For example, in Italy, the Italian Paralympic Committee has been working with schools, and as you can see in the picture here, and rehabilitation in the picture above. In Ireland, there is a solid network linking local sports partnerships, sports inclusion disability officers, in conjunction with the National Irish Disability Sports Organization. And another example, in addition, the Italian Paralympic Committee recognized uh, the EICI, which is the Italian Inclusion Sports Organization. So still in terms of good practices, it is necessary to remind that sports tutoring uh, is an integrated system of interventions that support and guide athletes in their personal, 
at different levels, as you can see in the in the picture, that are um, personal, athletic, academic, and educational, as well as professional development. Um, so from this perspective, uh, the best practices at the European level have the following characteristics, which are, which are based on regulated action. I'm not gonna go through all the specification of the different actions. Uh, I just mentioned the actions, but then we can go through these maybe later on in the discussion. So uh, characteristics of regulated action, preventive action, um, so prevention, coordination, coordinated action, centralized action, flexible action, assessment or evaluation, as well as economic support. Now, uh, regarding the university's provision to promote the dual career, it emerged from the good practices collected from the partners' reports that they depend on individual initiatives taken by university in the area that are listed here below. So the area, for example, of needs analysis, the identification of specific needs of each student athletes in advance, uh, flexibility, the organization of flexible and agile curricular organization, and in the support uh, in the transition phase from sports career to job placement. Um, do you have any questions so far? Am I speaking too fast? Um, I don't know. If I may suggest, um, I think that you can feel free to make this my initial presentation, opening presentation, as a sort of open discussion for questions or to share ideas. I really um, encourage and suggest you to take notes for the final discussion. Maybe we can postpone the discussion later on at the end of all the um, presentation the talks and the interview, if you agree. So just a second, if there is an urgent question, but, uh, and then I move on. Okay. So uh, if we think at a European level, there is no systematic collection of specific data on the participation of people with disabilities in sport. And in fact, from the data collected in the partners report, um, we, um, we noticed that there are 56 elite athletes representing Spain, 36 Paralympic athletes representing Portugal, 105, uh, 101 athletes representing Italy in Rio 2016. So we would like to suggest as working hypothesis for the project, that all the countries are uh, really invited to collect more accurate official data to help quantify the phenomenon from the designated bodies. Mm, according to Eurostat data collected in 2011, there is a growing trend of people with disabilities who get a university degree. So despite the growing number of people with disabilities who have already graduated from university, there are still significant inequalities compared to people with disabilities. So again, from the data collected by the partners countries uh, in, in, in the executive summary involved in the project, uh, we can say that um, uh, it emerged that the percentage of students with disabilities enrolled in university shows variation uh, in a range from 0.1% in Romania to maximum 6.2% in Ireland. Uh, also, accessibility varies from country to country and from university to university. And uh, the most frequent measures implemented by university are um, meant to facilitate the educational pathway of student athletes with disabilities, are exemptions or uh, from tax or uh, tax benefits, or maybe reserved places of certain given percentage over the on the total number of enrollment, specialized tutoring, adaptation of teaching and assessment methods, um, provisions of um, specific teaching aids and materials and counseling services for job placement. Now, from the partners report emerged that 
people with disabilities have to face barriers in three different fields that are strictly linked to the dual career, to the dual career. These uh, barriers are barriers to education, to the dual career itself, and uh, to, to sport. And uh, paraphrasing and adapting a little bit Professor Isidori's model, we can compare student athletes with disabilities to a sort of a super centaur model, which includes um, the three dimensions shown uh, in the picture above of being a student, an athlete, and a person with disability. Regarding the dual career, there is a lack of empirical data, direct, a lack of direct experience and specific scientific studies. So the main barriers are in this case, fatigue and stress, lack of time, uh, logistics, distance between training center and university, lack of flexibility in teaching pathways, lack of qualified university staff, and of course, lack of economic resources. So again, suggestions as working hypothesis for this project, we really think that it's crucial to map the specific needs of the person strictly involved and uh, also consider the difficulty in finding a significant sample of student athletes with disabilities. So as also as it is mentioned and stated in the project, um, the partners should consider uh, involving not only students already enrolled, but also students in the process of enrolling. And uh, the model developed by Professor Capranica and Guidotti, as you can see in the picture, shows uh, all the actors involved in the process of guiding the dual career of the elite athletes. But for the purpose of this project, we will focus on the role of university, which is highlighted in red in the picture. Now, bearing all this in mind, which I know it's, it's a lot, but we really try to um, summarize all the reports um, and taking into account the different national tutoring systems, it is crucial to one, define and outline the field of competence of the university sports tutor. Two, identify the training actions by means of implementing the special need dimensions of tutoring. Three, identify other professionals within the network of stakeholders the university sports tutor will interact with. And four, define and outline the competencies of other stakeholders within the more general sports tutoring system. Now, um, I'm moving on to the, the end of my presentation. In conclusion, to open a wide debate, uh, which we can discuss uh, later on uh, for the project, we would like to suggest the following core competencies for the university sports tutors that are uh, welcoming the student athlete at university and facilitating his her integration, supporting the student athletes in handling bureaucratic procedures, mapping student athletes special needs, mediating between student athlete teachers and classmates, collaborating with teachers in drawing up personalized educational plan, facilitating the development of personal resources as well as uh, job placement. And finally, uh, here is a list uh, of the stakeholders directly involved that are uh, professionals like psychologists, counselor, educators, coordinator of the sports tutoring process, parents, teachers and classmates, coaches and sports managers, qualified special, special needs tutors, interpreters, and other university specialized staff, as well as job placement and employment agency. So I really thank you for uh, joining uh, today, today's webinar. And I really have to uh, thank um, Lorenzo, Emanuele, Angela, Giulio, Alessio, without whose help this event would not have been possible as well as my presentation. So uh, I'll stop here my presentation. And um, um, I think we can postpone the discussion and I hope it was clear and not too quick, but uh, I mean, as I told you, it was a long and dense report. So if I move on, uh, if you all agree, I introduce um, an, uh, Colonel Marco Iannuzzi, uh, 
and, uh, and I introduce you to Angela uh, Magnanini. Um, she's going to interview um, Colonel Giannuzzi, um, who is um, representing the Paralympic movement and athlete. And um, did I forget? Um, he is also um, the president of the uh, Regione Lazio. Angela, could you? Yes. Yes, um, the, um, the committee of the Regione Lazio, right? Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I leave you the floor. I'm really um, honored and glad to have these uh, guests. So um, I leave you the floor for the interview. I have to say that uh, there is going to be an um, inter uh, the, the colonel uh, interview will be translated simultaneously. So um, approximately, <laughs> so um, uh, don't worry if you listen to uh, the answer uh, of the colonel in Italian and after two, three minutes of interview, the interview is gonna be translated uh, by the interpreter Alessio. Uh, so uh, please, uh, okay. uh, scream. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Alessandra, and uh, thank you, uh, Marco, uh, for this uh, discussion. Uh, well, um, could you share, please, with us uh, uh, your experience? Uh, good morning to everyone, and I'm sorry if I don't speak in English, but I think it's better for everyone that I speak in Italian, uh, because I really want to explain uh, well, the meaning of my words. Eh, buongiorno, grazie professoressa Magnanini, grazie professoressa Fazio per l'invito e per l'opportunità. Eh, prima di tutto sono molto contento di vedere queste persone che sono collegate un po' da, da tutta Europa e, e che ho notato con attenzione dalla chat eh, hanno seguito la sua presentazione professoressa avete toccato dei punti secondo me fondamentali e lo dico da uomo di sport da persona che ha una disabilità da poco più di vent'anni e, e da persona che in questo momento si sta impegnando o cerca di dare il massimo per rendere quanto più facile possibile la vita degli atleti con disabilità e, io sono un colonnello di aeronautica militare eh, ho iniziato la mia carriera come pilota di aeronautica militare e a seguito di un incidente di volo durante una missione di addestramento ho subito una lesione al midollo spinale a seguito del quale ho perso eh, il requisito per essere un, un pilota eh, però a proposito delle leggi che voi avete presentato e noi in Italia abbiamo una legge, in questo momento sono abbastanza sicuro che siamo gli unici al mondo ad applicarla in un certo modo, è una legge che si chiama legge per il ruolo d'onore, appunto è un ruolo onorifico che noi diamo ad alcuni dei nostri militari che nell'adempimento del proprio dovere perdono il requisito fisico e uh, altri paesi richiamano in servizio attivo i militari che subiscono delle lesioni permanenti ma noi riusciamo a richiamare in servizio attivo e per i militari questa parola servizio attivo è molto importante eh, anche le gravi disabilità quindi parliamo di tetraplegie parliamo di persone uh, che subiscono una, una cecità completa e in questo momento nelle forze armate italiane sono 25 le persone richiamate. Pensate che quando sono stato richiamato io nel 2002 eravamo solamente in tre. Questa legge esiste dal 1918, da dopo la Prima Guerra Mondiale. E il principe d'Inghilterra, o meglio l'ex principe uh, del Galles, uh, Harry, è stato molto attento a questa legge italiana. E scusatemi, io ho perso un po', ho, ho deviato dal mio discorso che mi ero prefissato, ma perché mi sto ricollegando al, ai vostri punti elencati? E, 
con molti paesi europei e, an e anche dall'altra parte del mondo come Canada, Stati Uniti, ehm, stiamo lavorando affinché queste cose possano essere simili in quanti più paesi possibile. E adesso c'è un tavolo di discussione a livello militare con almeno 20 paesi. Siamo partiti in quattro, quindi c'è una bella e evoluzione e, e mi fa piacere appunto questo discorso di oggi perché eh, i ragazzi che sono presenti oggi saranno il futuro del, de, di tutta quella che può essere la parte dirigenziale probabilmente dello sport e quindi mi auguro che possano fare un buon lavoro. E fermatemi... Hey, Marco, eh, ok, eh, Alessio, can you translate? Yes, of course. So good morning, everybody. And uh, first of all, good morning and thank to Professor Magnanini and Professor Fazio for their invitation and for this opportunity to share with all of you my experience. So I'm pleased to see here many of you coming from all over Europe. And uh, I'm pleased to see as well that uh, you are very interested in this event. I'm, I was checking the chat, I was checking your feedback on the chat, and I saw that you were very uh, proactive taking part in this event. So. I would like to uh, share with you some very important uh, points and I would like to talk as a man of sport, but as well as a disabled person. I've been a disabled person's, uh, person over the last 20 years. Uh, and uh, I've been, I'm working and I've been working to support the life of disabled athletes over the last years. So I started my career as a pilot for the Italian aeronautic and uh, I had a severe accident during my career according to after, and as a consequence of this accident, I could no longer work as a pilot. So uh, in the previous speak, uh, in the previous speech, sorry, the previous speaker uh, talked about the Italian law. And I would like to mention now an a specific Italian law, which is called the law of honor roll. And this honor roll is a very uh, peculiar law that we have in Italy and uh, which is focused on military people. So people like me that no longer have physical uh, features in order to, uh, to do their uh, military job have the opportunity, thanks to this, role, to this law, to this Italian law, to still take part uh, in active roles within the military uh, field. And I'm talking about people affected by severe disabilities. So for example, blind people or, very, or other very severe disabilities. So uh, this, when I, uh, when this law, sorry, this law was uh, started, was created in 1918. Uh, when I took part in this project, thanks to this law in 2002, we were only three people, three military people uh, with an active role thanks to this law. Today we are 25 people, so you can see how it is growing and how it is improving. And let me add as well that uh, at the global level, uh, several different countries are now working and involved in order to focus on this uh, Italian law. Let me mention just the Prince of Wales, Harry, for example, who was very interested in uh, focusing on this law. And there are many other European countries, but also uh, non-European countries like Canada or USA that are uh, involved in, in this debate. So we are now working to, do, to develop the same approach at the global level, of course, talking from the military point of view in order to develop this debate. And there are now 20 countries involved. Just think that at the beginning, there were only four countries involved. So you can see how important it is this debate and I would like, I, it was really important for me to share this information with you because I'm addressing to young people now who will be the future and who will play key roles in the future. Marco. Allora, Marco. Ehm, vo volevo, stavo cercando un link da poter condividere su questa legge, il ruolo d'onore, visto che c'erano alcune persone interessate. Eh, magari in un secondo momento ve lo, ve lo faccio vedere. Eh, io ho, ho cominciato la mia carriera da atleta. E... Okay, sorry, uh, sorry Marco, uh, I will post your, your notes in the chat. Uh, scrivo quello che hai detto che okay. cercherai. Il... Ok. <ride> okay. Eh, io ho cominciato la mia carriera come atleta. E... Dopo la riabilitazione, o meglio, contemporaneamente la riabilitazione, 
una parte della mia riabilitazione è stata in piscina, quindi ho conosciuto in quell'occasione il nuoto paralimpico. E ovviamente mi sono appassionato immediatamente perché mh, attraverso il nuoto ho ritrovato una certa libertà nei movimenti no? e quindi anche ehm, ritrovare quella che erano eh, le, le proprie capacità. Quindi eh, tu passi da una situazione dove hai meno capacità in una situazione dove invece ne trovi delle altre e ne acquisisci sempre nuove. Mi piace fare un esempio. Eh, noi militari facciamo sempre delle prove sportive. Io in accademia eh, nuotavo i 50 metri stile libero da una persona che non aveva mai fatto agonismo uh, in 35-36 secondi nel mio mondiale del 2008 che è stata la mia miglior prestazione in assoluta ho nuotato in 29 secondi la stessa distanza quindi sono stato più veloce di quasi 7 secondi con una disabilità e la mia battuta è sempre la stessa quindi quando, era, quando è che ero disabile da normo dotato oppure dopo quando non avevo più l'uso delle gambe è solo una battuta ma per far capire quanto nonostante senza l'uso delle gambe io abbia migliorato tantissimo la, la, la mia prestazione in acqua e quando uh, nel mio percorso ovviamente l'età è avanzata e quindi ho deciso di, di lasciare il nuoto agonistico e, le cose non vengono mai per caso e, in quel momento il Ministero della Difesa eh, riconoscendomi dei titoli che avevo vinto in precedenza mi ha chiesto dei pareri per poter avviare un nuovo progetto che è quello della costituzione del primo gruppo sportivo militare interforze che si occupasse uh, del mondo paralimpico e si chiama gruppo sportivo paralimpico difesa ripeto è l'unico interforze, perché noi abbiamo i gruppi sportivi delle singole forze armate o dei corpi armati dello Stato, ed è l'unico che si occupa uh, di, di paralimpismo. E ho avuto l'opportunità di, di avviare questi lavori, quindi è stata la mia primissima esperienza come dirigente. E, a quel punto eh, si è aperto un mondo dei nuovi dialoghi con il Comitato Italiano Paralimpico e, e abbiamo portato avanti tantissimi lavori. Ok, Marco... Stop. Fermo, sì. Ok. Eh, Alessio. Ok, sorry, the microphone was not working. So uh, he, he will share a link for this law that he was mentioning. So I think the link will, is being shared on the, on the chat where you can find the law. So uh, Colonel Yanusi started his career as an athlete. Uh, in the period where he was working for his rehabilitation. So he started swimming, he started approaching the swimming pool for the uh, rehabilitation after his accident. And uh, during this rehabilitation process, he became a Paralympic athlete, basically, because uh, he found his uh, uh, free, I found a new freedom for his movements, and he actually found Uh, new skills and new abilities as well that he was not aware of before. So, uh, of course, as a military person, he used to take sport tests. He used to have different tests in the sport field. And uh, just to make an example, uh, before the accident, he used to swim for 50 meters in uh, 35, 36 seconds. Well, in 2008, when he was a disabled athlete during the championship, he actually <clears throat> was able to swim the same distance in only 29 seconds. So definitely uh, faster than before being a disabled athlete. So uh, just to make a joke, he's saying, when was I a real disabled person before my accident or after my accident when I could no longer rely on my legs, but I still was swimming faster than before. So of course, year after year, I decided to stop my, uh, the agonistic uh, sport, the agonistic approach. And uh, at that time, the ministry, the Italian Ministry for the Defense asked me to take part and to organize a new project, which was the first uh, military sport group for Paralympic, Paralympic athletes, 
uh, which was actually addressed to different uh, army departments, so involving different army departments. And this was the first experience in Italy of this kind. So I took part in this project, which led me to uh, get in contact also with the Italian Paralympic Committee, on which I'm still working nowadays. Um, C'è stata anche un'altra importantissima attività, che era quella che accennavo in precedenza, eh, dove praticamente grazie alla um, Royal Society Foundation e quindi al um, Principe Harry eh, che ha organizzato uh, dei giochi internazionali dedicati ai militari feriti e questi giochi si chiamano Invictus Games. Um, L'Italia ha preso parte sin da, da subito a questo programma perché appunto ci abbiamo creduto dal primo momento eh, devo dire che ha avuto un impatto importantissimo sui nostri atleti, sulle famiglie delle persone che sono dietro ogni singolo atleta e, e anche sul no sulla nostra nazione. E, basti pensare che noi in quegli anni abbiamo partecipato per la prima volta alla parata della Festa della Repubblica per il 2 giugno. E ancora oggi mi vengono i brividi a raccontarlo e, e sono molto sincero. E quando uh, passa il nostro gruppo sportivo uh, ai via dei fori imperiali appunto nella strada principale della, della parata le persone hanno un'altra un forza nell'applauso che è percepibilissimo da tutti ce lo disse anche il presidente della repubblica in un secondo momento ha detto quando siete passati voi sono stati molto più forti gli applausi perché perché riconoscono che cosa stiamo rappresentando in quel momento e che cosa abbiamo voglia ancora di rappresentare attraverso quello che stiamo facendo. Ed è molto importante questo per l'opinione pubblica perché più si parla uh, delle disabilità e, e credo che più si assottigino queste differenze che sono delle differenze banali. E adesso concludo quello che è il mio discorso riguardo la mia disabilità. E, in realtà mh, io ho voluto fare tantissime cose da quando sono ho avuto il mio incidente, mi sono laureato, eh, ho, ho costruito la mia famiglia insieme a mia moglie, abbiamo viaggiato tantissimo e, e ci siamo ripromessi di vedere tutti i paesi del mondo prima di, eh, di diventare troppo vecchi per, per farlo. E, mh, questo però è possibile certamente con una certa forza di volontà, sicuramente con uno spirito di adattamento a quelle che sono le difficoltà, ma soprattutto viene agevolato se veniamo messi tutti nelle stesse condizioni di poter fare le cose. E diceva una persona molto più intelligente di me, Albert Einstein, eh, non si valuta la capacità natatoria di un pesce chiedendogli di arrampicarsi su un albero. E, e questo è fondamentale come esempio. Eh, noi, se me veniamo messi tutti nelle stesse condizioni, diventiamo tutti delle risorse. E io di questo ne sono profondamente convinto. Basta avere solamente gli strumenti e le opportunità giuste. Quindi okay, grazie per il lavoro stop. che state facendo. Ok, stop. Okay. Uh, Alessio, translate. So I would like to share with you another example concerning another new activity in which I took part, which was an event organized by the Royal Society Foundation led by the Prince Harry of Wales. For, in this case, for the first time, the Invictus Games were organized, which were international games for military people victim of accidents. In this, uh, Italy took part in these games, and uh, it was very important, this event, for our athletes, but also for our families as well, and of course, for our entire nation. So, uh, Starting from that point, we realized that something was actually changing, and this was witnessed as well by the, the participation of our group, of our disabled <clears throat> athlete group, in the first parade for the uh, Italian Republic uh, Day, which is on the 2nd of June. And in, on that occasion, I still remember it very well, our sport group was uh, crossing and going through the main street of the parade and we all felt a real support from the people uh, that really were uh, supporting us and this was also uh, recognized by the president of the Italian Republic and the reason of this support was that people when they saw us passing by uh, 
they really recognized what we were representing, what we were doing, our strengths. So uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, since I had this accident, I actually did many different and very important things in my life. So I, gra I graduated at the university. I uh, married my wife. We traveled a lot and we promised each other that we will travel all over the world uh, as long as we are still young. And that's just to tell you that uh, you can do everything you want if you really have the resources, the tools available and the opportunities to do uh, what you really want to do. Let me just quote Albert Einstein. And when he said that you cannot assess how good a fish is to swim if you try to assess him while raising a tree, asking him to raise a tree. So this basically means that uh, we all have a huge potential, but we need to rely on the same opportunities, on the same resources and on the same tools. Grazie. Okay, thank you uh, to Alessio and uh, thank you to Marco for his uh, uh, experience and uh, for uh, his words. <laughs> because uh, uh, I think it's a beautiful words and a good message to uh, all. And now we can... Um, Yes, we can move on with the uh, the next guest. Uh, so uh, let's sorry, thank, thank you to Alessio for the translation. Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Sure. Yes, again, let me thank you, Marco, uh, for being with us today, and um, it's a real pleasure. Uh, thank you, Alessio, uh, who kindly translated uh, the interview. And um, we move on to the, uh, the other guest for today, that is Nicola Pintus, the president of Philippide Association. It's, um, I'm really glad to have you, Nicola, with us. So I'll just leave you the floor um, for, your, um, for your talk. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening uh, for everyone. And thank you to Professoressa Magnanini and uh, Professor Safazio for uh, this opportunity. Uh, I run with high speed uh, because the time <laughs> is no longer. Okay, uh, what is the- uh, Sorry, Nicola, don't worry about the time because we started a little later. So I think we are perfectly in time. We can okay. use 10 minutes. Okay, we have the video now. Okay, what is the project, the Filippi de Progetto Association? Uh, it's the sport proposal, especially for person with autism. And uh, no, for only for autistic, but person with autism is very, very important for the United Nations explain the person with autism. Um, we have in the um, Filippi the project three special points. A uh, associated at the United Nations uh, Department of Global Communication from uh, April 4th uh, and 2019, and accredited at the COSP, uh, Conference of Organiz Organization of Sport for Disabled Persons at the United Nations. Uh, B is the uh, Meritorious Association of the Italian Paralympic Committee. And C is the affiliated at the Italian Federation for Mental Disabled. And uh, what is the role of the Filippi de Project Association? Uh, it's the... Um, uh, Convention of the Right of Person with Disabled, it's, it's very important for us, the Article 30. Um, I, I think uh, we jump uh, this, uh, this slide. Uh, you know more information, look uh, the, um, the site uh, www.progettofilippi.un.org. And now I want to, to see the video that explain the activity with the persons with autism in Rome and the other country in, uh, in Europe. Um, moment, now we start. Okay.
Keďže Michal je najmladší zo štyroch detí, to, že jeho vývoj je odlišný, som zistila veľmi skoro. Ale k diagnoze sme sa žiaľ dopracovali až v deviat, jeho v deviatich rokoch. Vidíme Míška ako polročné dieťatko. Veľmi šťastné, vyzerá aj bystré a aj na tejto druhej fotografii ho môžeš vidieť. Ešte netušíme, že ma, budeme mať niekedy nejaký problém. Sme v podstate šťastní, usmiatí. Tuto, Miško, môžeš sa na seba pozrieť, ako si vyzeral. Michal si určite neuvedomoval, že je nejaký iný ako jeho súrodenci. A naopak zase súrodenci takisto nevnímali, že Michal je nejaký iný. Moja, moja prvá spomienka na Miša bola, že koktal, keď rozprával a používal úplne iné slova, také, ktoré si sám vymyslel. Dobrý deň, volám sa Michal Stubňa, mám 26 rokov. Venujem sa aj športu, robím cyklistiku a lyžovanie. Atletiku niekedy tak, ale je to málo. Väčšinou je to... Určite vďaka športu sa naučil disciplíne lepšie poslúchať a lepšie vnímať pravidla a takisto to malo veľký vplyv na jeho socializáciu. Vlastne boli tie preteky a potom sa nominoval do sveta, keď som povyhrával. Som v Južnej Koreji, v Číne, Rakúsko, ďalej tuto v Arci, v Abu Dhabi, teraz nedávno. A dnes ho vlastne jeho brat Samozrejme, zoberie na cyklový led a idú z Vajnor až na Kolibu, alebo keď trénovali, tak tuto na Jurskej ceste vo Vajnoroch na, na výkon na špeciálne olympiády. A ďalej máme takú slepú Jurskú cestu a tam sa tiež pripravujem, alebo... A keď sa pripravujem na nejakú olimpiádu, tak chodím vám cvičiť to tak, takej posilovne. Starky mám na takú trenerku a ona nás trénuje a chodí s nami aj zahraničný dobrovoľník, tiež tam s nami. Michal je veľmi húževnatý, motivovaný a citlivý chlapec. Tak v budúcnosti by som chcel mať možno tiež svoju rodinu, no, aby obicíkal tie mamáky. Tak môžem povedať na druhej strane, že Michal aj so svojou diagnózou je určite vynimočný vzhľadom na svoje výsledky, ktoré dosiahol v športe. Camilla je una ragazza di 26 anni che corre molto bene. Scopriamo la disabilità di Camilla intorno all'anno, quando ci rendiamo conto che non percorre più le, le tappe canoniche dei bambini. No, aspetta, sbagliato, che cacchio dico? Iniziamo una serie di accertamenti in giro per l'Italia eh, senza arrivare però ancora ad oggi a nessuna diagnosi fornita. Io Camilla, fallito. Poi eh, ti faccio. I deficit principali di Camilla sono una carenza attentiva molto marcata. Lo sport è stata la chiave di volta della, dello sviluppo cognitivo di, Chiam di Camilla. 
quando era molto piccola, una volta imparata a camminare, ha iniziato subito a correre. Il mio spot si chiama Cozza, eh, Satti, poi Lunghi, Basta. Ho iniziato a cercare associazioni che allenassero eh, ragazzi con deficit eh, intellettivi. Così è iniziato il percorso con Progetto Filippide. La mia squadra è Filippide aiutare a ritmo a fare cose così poi loro i miei compagni aiutare me io aiuto loro insieme ha migliorato tantissimo la sua capacità attentiva soprattutto grazie all'introduzione eh, dell'allenamento con gli ostacoli Quello che io cercavo in Progetto Filippide è eh, superare la soglia dell'allenamento considerato come terapia riabilitativa. Volevo che Camilla venisse considerata un atleta speciale, ma sempre atleta. Portando in parallelo sport e terapie riabilitative, vince lo sport 8 a 1 sulle terapie. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Tool, and uh, we we see the the last run for autism is the big uh, um, run uh, for inclusive uh, uh, street marathon uh, of uh, 10 kilometers in uh, in Europe, maybe in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you so much for um, your uh, talk, for um, explaining um, in a very uh, clear way uh, the role of the associations you run. And also thank you, um, uh, Colonel again, uh, thank you for sharing your experiences and for this last very useful and insightful uh, video. And uh, it's now time to open the discussion um, for the next uh, project actions, or I mean to discuss, you know, suggestions that we raised during my presentation and also the experience we shared uh, to discuss a little bit your opinions and your ideas. So we now have 10 minutes for discussion and um, I invite you to raise questions or um, provide feedback on this first webinar. Buongiorno, Alessandra. Uh, buongiorno. Uh, it's Alejandro speaking from UCAM. Uh, I would like to, to thank your outstanding presentation. It was uh, really clear, really <laughs> instructive, and uh, really necessary to uh, have a, a framework, uh, you know, a highlights of what, uh, our first findings in, in this project. So uh, thank you so much for this uh, fantastic uh, presentation. Thanks, Angela, Lorenzo, Emanuele, for all your work. <laughs> I know that uh, we were a little bit rushed of time and, you know, in these strange moments we are living with the pandemic, to, to, to no push this work is, uh, is, uh, is not easy. So thank you very much. I uh, also want to thank uh, Colonel Marco Lanucci for his uh, inspirational uh, speech and his uh, fantastic story. Uh, it's the reason why uh, we are here and, and doing this project to try to, to support and to help those people who uh, want to manage their uh, professional careers and athletic careers uh, without undermining 
one uh, with another. And thanks so much to Nicola Pintus for the marvelous work you are doing with your association. Uh, people like you is really necessary in this society. So we are really glad to join all of us, uh, universities, institutions, NGOs, to work together for the same goal. So uh, I think we close this uh, first uh, intellectual output uh, really well. Mm -hmm. We did a, a great job, all of us. And now we have to face the next uh, step, that is to continue with our research, mm -hmm. doing uh, or, or just taking uh, surveys and focus group. We have uh, some news in, in that sense. Uh, we have uh, designed a raft of a survey, mm -hmm. and we are going to make you a call uh, next week for an online meeting specifically for this, uh, just to discuss uh, the raft uh, of our survey and to see uh, the next step uh, looking for a specific target and, and etc. So uh, today it's a day for celebration to just to, to cheer all up and, and thank you very much, Rach Emile, for all your work. For Italico is signed only for professionalism and, and good job always. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alejandro. Are there any comments from the audience or? Um, um, yes, may I? Yes, Claudia, please. I leave you the floor. I'm totally agree with my with my colleague Alejandro. Thank you very much for your work. Thank you very much for your inspirational stories. And I we think that one of the most uh, huge barriers is the the different frame frame low work. Uh. Frame low low low. It's very important to visible to to communicate this work to to in to make sure that other students have more knowledge about these people, these people mm -hmm. that can do sports mm -hmm. in the different ways with support, but uh, can do and they're at athletic, they're at athletes also. They are Paralympic athletes. We okay. have to, to work uh, and to make sure that we have the same respect of other people. Okay. So you, you mean that the, um, um, the most important barriers are uh, the law system, the different legal framework, yes, the legal and, legal framework. and also to raise awareness? Yes, I think that communication is very important mm -hmm. and we have to work together in order to make sure that in all countries, Okay. Uh, increase knowledge about these these uh, these athletes, and I have a question, if you may. I? Yes. Uh, as you you mentioned before in your in your presentation, mm -hmm. that uh, there are fifty six athletes from Spain. Yes. Uh, there are mentors. Uh, there there all of them are Paralympics uh, athletes or they don't have disability? Um, I think it's Paralympic athletes. That are, I mean, we collected data from the reports. You submitted the first reports that were all included in, in the bigger volume that is called the executive summary. Okay. So, it, what, uh, so it's, yes, Alejandro, you can confirm it's 56 Paralympic athletes, aren't they? No, I, I, I really don't remember exactly the data, but uh, we just make yeah, we, a, yeah, we what, took what can we call that, a prospection about uh, yeah. the state of art of uh, Paralympic sport in, in Spain, but no, no, we have uh, more of them, but probably it was uh, just a simple, um, yeah. an example of um, some situation about uh, adapted sport in, in Spain. Thank yes. you, thank you. Yes. I have this update because I'm new and I want to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Uh, oh, yes, please, Anton, Antonio or Antonino? Antonino. Antonino, yes. Congratulations. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Where it is a well organized report that summarize the main points and also make very important suggestions. Congratulations. Can you share with us your presentation? Sorry, if I can share my presentation? Yes. 
Yes, yes, of course. I can send you a PDF of the presentation. Please no, remember not... that we have a common Google Drive for this yes. project. Okay, so yes. this is part of the I01. So Alessandra, feel free to upload this presentation to that yes. uh, folder. Okay. Yes. And they, they you will have folder. access to. The, uh, there is a, a common share folder for the project. So I will upload a PDF file of my presentation. Yeah. And if you think it might be useful, uh, as it, I didn't use PowerPoint. I use another uh, online tool. It's in the cloud. I can copy this and maybe provide the link so you can, yeah. you know, it's interactive. If you, if you, if you think or, it's useful, whatever. Could could Let could be know. possible to download it in PDF, uh, Alessandra? Yes. Yes. I yes. think PDF is better for for all of us. It's yes, better. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Information about Filippi the Project Association. Okay, uh, thank you, Nicola. Um, yes, I, I'd like to remind you, this is important for the Filippi the Project Association. Um, you can um, go to, uh, you can surf the website that is www.progettofilippide.com un.org but uh, I think we can share the links as well of um, Progetto Filippide and also um, the um, Paralympic uh, Committee uh, Regione Lazio that it's um, uh, run by Colonel Iannuzzi, right Angela? Yes, we can do this. Mm, yes, no problem. Okay. Um, I think we have two more minutes. We are perfectly in time um, for maybe another um, comment. How is the, the situation right now in, in Italy? Because in maybe in October, maybe, maybe. Uh, we can have uh, our first uh, cross national meeting, maybe uh -huh. in person. So how is the, the situation there? Uh, uh, very similar. Uh, we just got um, a letter from the rector yesterday <laughs> and uh, who is um, warmly recommending uh, to, um, he's asking for uh, uh, more um, teaching um, hours uh, because we probably will start next academic year in person. Oh, and, that's uh, very we nice. Have a yeah. wider number of students enrolled, so we will probably for the distancing mm -hmm. systems and the measures that will definitely stay. I mean, we uh, we probably we will have a different organization. We cannot use huge uh, hall or auditoriums. We have to respect the distancing. I, I imagine. I don't know for sure, but we will probably have um, different schedule. Uh, so apart from the organizing uh, details, uh, we um, we really we do hope we do hope to start in person, and I think we will yes. have. Uh, from yesterday night, curfew is over. So in Italy, no more curfew. So people is free to go out at night without uh, time limits. So. Um, um, Yes, um, sorry if I'm interrupting because Claudia is asking if we can share the video. So maybe Nicola could send me the link to the video you shared with us. Um, and uh, uh, yes, of course we can share the videos. Well. Yeah, sorry, it's a little bit out of topic, but uh, <laughs> multitasking gets a little... Uh, okay, so yes, the situation is getting better. And... Um, uh, a, a good percentage of the population has been vaccinated so far. So, and now uh, we are there are open days and um, 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 vaccines for uh, younger people. So, from 12 to 17, and then people that are graduating, students, graduating students. So, um, I think it's getting better. How is the situation in the other countries? Spain is. Yes, it's more or less. Uh, the, the vaccination uh, program is going really well. Uh, 
uh, some of us are already vaccinated and uh, yes in next year we are going to to start uh, again face to face uh, education probably and yes there is no restriction of uh, time they are talking about to to remove masks uh, outdoors so well the the future the, the next future is is looking uh, promising so so let's hope that in the next month we can we can do this kind of uh, meetings uh, in person maybe okay well uh, alessandra yes good morning to everyone uh, thank you alessandra angela and Arimanuele. Uh, i'm happy the presentation uh, the webinar was uh, fantastic really fantastic uh, i want to welcome uh, our, our new partner, the Spanish uh, Olympic Committee, institution of the European uh, Paralympic uh, uh, Committee. Uh, here we, we have uh, Zurigne uh, in the representation of the, the Paralympic Spanish Paralympic Committee. And I want to, to, uh, to thank uh, everyone, uh, mainly the, the testimonials, uh, very interesting and the word, the very good word of the intellectual output one. And I, I, I was uh, talking about the, the next meeting with Alejandro, and we are very happy uh, to have the opportunity to travel abroad to, to Rome, uh, because for us, it's a very interesting city, and we are our friends, and we have the, the very, uh, uh, we are uh, very hopeful uh, to go to there. Okay, uh, thank you, Antonio. Uh, thank you all. If there are no more comments, I think we can conclude now. And um, I don't think there is a need for special concluding remarks apart from thanking you all again for participating. And um, uh, Alejandro has already summed up a little bit the next steps. There is going to be a survey. There is going to be probably a meeting in person and uh, keeping our fingers crossed. And um, yes, please, Alessandro. Um, yes. And um, so um, I just, I think we can um, stop here and, um, um, and meet you all very, very soon, uh, hopefully in person. Um, well, uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, you will receive an email from, from me in the next hours uh, with a call for, for our online meeting to, to talk about the, the survey uh, structure. Maybe for the next week, uh, Monday or Tuesday, okay? So I will ask for your um, ability and uh, let's see if we can uh, arrange a meeting altogether. Also, I have to say uh, thank you uh, from Emanuele Sidori that uh, had, uh, had to leave because he has another meeting. <laughs> this is um, pandemic times that makes us, uh, you know, multitasking. But um, yes, um, so. Uh, if you open your camera, uh, we can to do a photo group. Ah, yes, if you all yes. switch, switch uh, your camera on. Only yes. for simulation. Yes. I hope I have all the participants. This Galleria, okay. Uh, I don't know. The, Maria, Jose, uh, camera off. Ah, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, Lucia. Uh, Lu Lucia is not here. Is uh, okay. it's outside. In, in so. Another meeting. Yeah. Okay. If we can share with us, would we wait? Mm. Okay. All right. So. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I I hope I took a picture. Did you take a picture, Antonio, as well? Or yes, uh, a screenshot. Uh, check okay. our uh, official Twitter account because we are going to upload all this. Uh, all right. Okay. Dissemination resources there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Nice Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Arrivederci. Buenos dias. <laughs>